Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Put off by how long this video is, don't worry, I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast, so while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself, and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. Arkham Asylum, video game thoughts. Now, I mentioned in the in the basic in the regular review that I would talk some about the Joker's end game and why it was a bit out of character and for the Joker a bit bland and lacking his brilliant insanity. Basically, yeah, the Joker getting, you know, creating this army of huge monsters, it's just, yeah, it, it lacks the, the, the color of the Joker. It's not this really horrifying thing that, I mean, it, it's basically an army of Banes, more or less, and Bane, you know, he's, he's extremely strong, and he can really, turn, actually, it's not even quite Bane, because Bane is intelligent, so, yeah, it's just, I see him more unleashing, you know, a ton of the, the laughing gas that, you know, makes, you know, that, that gives this, you know, twisted, grotesque smile to your face as it kills you. That's more Joker, you know, I just... The, the 1989 movie and the, the, you know, The Dark Knight movie from 2008 really get right the, the, the Joker, you know, his kind of end game. And... Like I said in the review, it makes sense that they would go with this other thing. They don't want to copy either of those two movies, and it has to be a, a big threat, something that Batman can hit, because it's in part a fighting game, so you need a centralized enemy to fight. And that's another thing where, you know, I love that the Joker was the villain for this game, but when you end up fighting the Joker, the Joker isn't really that much of a fighter, he's he's a taunter, he's a planner, he's not that much of a fighter. So, and and again, in the the aforementioned movies, they, they also find ways to work around that rather well. So, yeah, here it's just... Yeah, it's, it's the video game thing that unfortunately backfires a little bit there. With that said, I loved the way they used Ivy in this. I, the, the boss fight against her was the most different boss fight of, you know, of them all. I mean, a lot of the boss fights are just kind of a big hulking brute runs at you. You know, might be Bane, might just be someone on Titan, and you, you know, you hurl the batarang at their face as they're running, evade out of their way, kick them a bunch of times. I did like once you got on the back of one of them and started swatting away either, you know, regular Joker goons or another one of these types. That was, that was, that was a ton of fun. But, yeah, but I really like fighting Ivy with, you know, in this big protective shell and she, it opens and you attack it and you gotta watch out for these plants that come out of the ground and, and they'll like grab you and then you have to break free. I, that was fantastic. I really loved it because it gives you something to do. Which you're not just idly being hurt. You have to press the, you know, tap the, the jump key really fast to get free. And while you're doing that, you're taking damage. And if you avoid it altogether, you won't have to do that. But it's not just doing a lot of damage and then, you know, you keep moving. But it is, you know, the bosses in this game are your average kind of video game boss. With, you have to wait for them to do a certain attack, then you do a certain attack, get out of the way while they're doing the rest of the attacks and such, you know. The, the fun of 
swatting as a big hulking brute and of the uh, poison ivy fight somewhat do make up for that though now i do see the problem with the you know with with targeting the joker's end game as one of the one of the weak points of an otherwise really strong product if you remove titan from this game you lose a lot bane's presence is kind of ju it's it's in part there to you know it's it's almost a foreboding of it. yeah a hint of the titan although you by then you have already fought a tightened up you know joker goon it's 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 this idea of you know without bane why would dr young start trying to find out how to replicate that and yet without the you know the thing of a venom so yeah there's there's that that was perfect by the way the way you see him strapped up and he's back to like a normal form and he says she took away the venom you know and then joker's there oh don't worry and you know activates you know feeds in the venom and I th if you don't know who bane is if that's the first time you see bane you get it you you understand the basic character because you're seeing it in front of your eyes you're seeing him transform with the venom and you've seen how he was without the venom and then he attacks you it's just fantastic and yeah with without the titan with without bane without the titan no bane without the titan you know why is joker eager to get captured he wanted to get in because dr young would no longer help him with the research you know as he was he was trying to buy the stuff you know he tried she tried sending back the money and the whole thing and i like as well i, I think that pretty well covers the problems you run into at that time so i do i acknowledge that that the titan is very important to the overall game i i quite like that that ivy turns on joker you know after the thing and and her whole thing that's another thing i mean the fact that you fight her and also her luring you with the plant that's like a, a finger you know biting you and you you have the seductive thing there and she's also seduced with her pheromones several guards you know security guards that you then have to fight off you know and yeah she once she gets titan she starts taking over the island with her plants and it becomes a real threat to Batman. That's that's great. And and again and a further threat to Gotham. I found that that was in a way more compelling than the tightened up Joker. Briefly about the tightened up Joker, the design was excellent, really horrifying. The the, the I'm I'm not loving the mohawk, but that's like the one part of it, you know, the the claws, the the, the chin. He's he's there in just the the like pants or underpants, and it's got the the familiar Joker thing. He's pale all over his body. The the eyes, the whole, yeah, that was really really great. And and I like that he's like courting the media. He's like, pay attention to me, Jack Ryder or Jack. Yeah, something like that. You know, the the reporter there. And and it was also good he's already been established. You know, we've heard him on that was it the radio or television, something like that, earlier in the game, and then, you know, they say, Well, we've gotten this tape from the Joker, let's move in for a closer look and yeah, this whole thing because the Joker wants attention. He wants people to look and be horrified. So it really fits with that. I also, you know, on on that s same subject, the the working in of the Riddler as providing puzzles. Great idea. Now the let's see. I want yes, the, the Doctor Young. I like that there were some bad guys among the seemingly good guys. Doctor Young helped Joker with the Titan. If it wasn't for her. 
the Joker wouldn't have as much power as he has through this game. He wouldn't, you know, so, yeah. And the, that one guard, I've forgotten his name, but he's kill, killed pretty early on, the green thing on his face, and, you know, dead end, because he was no longer useful to Joker. And, you know, that whole thing, I mean, I realized these were new characters just introduced in this story, so killing them off doesn't seem like a big deal. But they did also kill off Scarecrow, at least it seemed like he would die getting pulled down by, you know, Killer Croc. And if, do not spoil Asylum City, Arkham City, or Origins, I have not gotten to those yet. I very well intend to, if, if he reappears in, in those games or, or something, but yeah. And Killer Croc, I loved that you had to really watch your step. I was like, I don't know if I really want to fight him because you shouldn't, you shouldn't be able to really fight Killer Croc. He's, he's huge and he is deadly in the game. It's, that's, again, they get the characters right, you know. The, the, and, and fighting Bane is also very much just trying to get out of his way and then throwing the batarang at him, you know, but Killer Croc, you throw the batarang and it just temporarily, you never defeat him in this game. Excuse me. I, I really love that. That's, yeah. And, and the way, you know, you, you can't run along, along the, the planks because it'll make too much noise. And then he just, you know, I had to test it just to see. And yep, he jumps up, pulls you down into the water, you know, it's, it's very animalistic. I, I really enjoy that. And then he'll start jumping up, and, or, or he'll start, you know, just, you know, destroying the, the, the planks, so you have to run away. That last bit of just the running away was excellent. I love that they fixed the camera. So you, you're looking behind you, you're seeing the planks disappear behind you. Because you're, you know, a lot of the time you're just running forward. So you don't really need to be able to see in front of you. That was fantastic. I really love that. And yeah, and it, Killer Croc's entire presence. I love that there's a door where you like hear goons say, we can't get the door open. Ah, it's just leave him in there. It's, it's Killer Croc. We don't want to mess with him. And then, you know, Afterwards, you can go up to the door and, and like try to open it, and literally, Croc will be right behind you. Ah, I've got your scent, and it says door locked, you know. And you're like, This is not gonna be the last time I meet him. I know I'm gonna meet him again. Just the whole thing, yeah. Of course, it's down there the, the spore that you know creates the antidote, it, yeah. And that was also one of my favorite uses of, or that, that was a uh, use of the low jackmeter that I really liked. That you had to, you know, try to find these, what do you call them? Yeah, the, these spores. All the while also being ready with the batarang. Because you can't be sure that, I, I tried to quick throw and it didn't hit, so, and, yeah. Got, got myself killed, and then it did warrant, you know, have the batarang primed and ready to throw. And, yeah. You have to, like, the... Let me see. Yeah, the... the you have to have it primed and ready to throw, and you're following the little jack meter, and every so often he's just gonna burst up, and then later you have to run away from him also. Just... That, that's some of what I mean by the, the horror element that I mentioned in the review. It was so well done, because it's that thing of, you never defeat him. You can stun him tempor temporarily, you can run away, but you can't defeat him. You just have to do what you're there to do, which they make sure to draw out. You have to collect like four or five spores. It's the longest puzzle of this kind of, you know, otherwise you're just following a trail, or is it, you know, it's, it's cool enough, but it's, it's easy, and there isn't the, that kind of tension along the way that, but yeah, I really love that they did that near the end there. Now, I, I really like the ending, I, that, you know, 
the Joker did get Gordon, and he's been hiding him all this time. You know, you thought that he was safe after you sent him off on the boat, but no, nope, Joker got him. And he's Joker. He he had a plan, of course. He's and yeah, he's hidden in there, and then he puts him in this electric chair, which. I really hope wasn't actually part of the asylum already. I hope he had to like jury rig something to make an electric chair. But frankly, seeing the architecture and the the, the story of the the background of the asylum, yeah, maybe it is like a, a, I, I didn't actually get all the what was it Amadeus Arkham, you know the the guy who I didn't get all that many of the, the yeah story. Bits, but I'm, I'm probably going to go back for and try to get some more of them. But anyway, yeah, and and so there's there's Gordon to have to rescue as well, and then afterwards, you know, Oracle calls, are you okay? And yeah, you know, it'll, it'll be fine. And you get the the wrapping up of you know Ivy's back in her cell. Everyone who was on Titan has, you know, I guess gotten antidote or. Did it just revert after time? It, it, yeah, because he, Batman seemed to use all the antidote on himself. But I also really like that. It's, it's again, it's part of Batman's character. He fights monsters. He, know, he knows never to become a monster. You know, the Joker is like, it's the only way you'll be able to defeat me. And that's, again, that's getting the character right. Joker is all about, I want to make you a monster because I will not be the only monster. I will not be the one raving lunatic. I will not be the most insane person. I have to destroy someone else the way I was destroyed. And Batman refuses, you know, he fights the mutation and then he uses the... I'm also glad that they had him use the antidote, that they didn't just say, oh, he's that strong will. That would have been a little bit of a stretch. You know, he's Batman, but yeah, okay. Now, the... But, but yeah, you know, the wrap-up and the thing of, you know, the Joker might suffer from reverting from the Titan, you know, that might hurt a bit more. I love that the finishing blow is literally, he sprays the explosive gel on the glove and and then you see it took out, like, several of the Joker's front teeth and, and it really damaged Batman's glove. And then you hear over the police radio, Harvey Dent, a.k.a. Two-Face, has just robbed a bank. And Batman, you know, sorry about your car. Can I give you a ride? No, thanks. I've got my own. And you see the, the bat plane, which, you know, we also saw earlier dropping off some equipment. And we saw it in the bat cave even earlier than that. So, yeah. And of course, of course Batman has a bat cave on Arkham Island. Always be prepared. So, he must be a real Boy Scout like that. And he, you know, grapples up into the bat, you know, bat plane and flies back to Gotham City. Because, yeah, it's been a tough night, but it ain't over. Harvey Dent's just robbed a bank. He's, he has to be stopped. So, yeah, it's, it's that perfect note of just, you know, Batman's work is never over. And as we've seen throughout the game, it's, it's just, it's necessary, but it's nasty. I mean, two people got... You know, two major characters got killed. You know, the the guard and Doctor Young, and a bunch of like security guards got killed by the goons. So yeah, it, it Batman wasn't able to save everyone or get everything completely perfect. But if he hadn't been there, it would have gone way worse. So yeah, he has to get back to Gotham. He has to get to take care of of Two Face. So, yeah, really loved that. And I think I will close by talking about the nightmare sequences with Scarecrow. I really love that, you know, almost immediately they make him huge. And that's again where we've got the Freddy thing, Freddy Krueger, and he, like, tries to grab at you, and his gaze gives off a light, and if you're caught in the gaze, then he reaches out and grabs you, you know. I, I, other than the, well, I do like the Kruger glove as well. I, I really like the design, is what I'm trying to get at, of, of Scarecrow in this game with the, 
you know, like gas mask and the thing with, like, just the, yeah, the, the things that go down in, in his mouth and the whole, and, and the gas mask thing and the, yeah, whole thing. And, and he'll, you know, and you have to hide from his gaze. And it's basically like a brief, serious Prince of Persia, you know, sequence. In fact, like real retro, a lot of it is like 2D from the side, so yeah. And he might stab down into the ground and skeletons will come out and you have to fight them off and, you know, get to the bat signal and shine it directly at him. Yeah, I, I really like that. I was a little unsure how he kept poisoning Batman. Like, the first and the third time I see it, because the first time you've just seen him rush past, and, I mean, you see the glass, and people are, like, dying, going insane from the, the gas. We don't know if that glass necessarily contained the gas, so it might have just, you know, gone out and gotten to Batman as well. The second time, I'm really not sure if, if that was maybe just like lingering effects, but the third time, right after, you do see Scarecrow standing there stabbing him, so yeah. I did find that it was a little bit shoehorned in that then you have to stop Scarecrow on the way to... I, I guess it's part of keeping the story really tight and moving because you're already on the way down there to get the, the spores from Killer Croc's lair, so... Yeah, you have to go down there, but at the same time, we're nearing the end, we gotta keep the pace up, gotta, you know, we're in the last stretch, so needs to be fast, needs to be intense, so yeah, they throw in Scarecrow, you know, going all, okay, well, then I'll poison the water, and the, yeah, I felt that the, the Titan waste that, you know, was going into Gotham's water supply, from the Joker's experiments and such, I found that that was a bit more... Yeah, that, that, that felt more organic in the story than Scarecrow suddenly running off. But I did quite like that then Killer Croc, you know, gets him. And you gotta love how he's like standing there. He's, he's over here, he's got the bag. Don't, don't come any closer, I will dump this in the water, you know. And, and, yeah, he's here, Batman starts here, he's like, don't come any closer, and he just walks closer. It's, it's, don't come any closer, and he just keeps walking over there, because he's Batman. He's, he knows Scarecrow, he knows that he can keep, yeah. And then, at the very end, he, of course, yeah, gets, gets killed for that. I, okay, I'll just briefly say, I really loved how many references they fit in here, that are like, you know, they're not gonna... There, there aren't that many elements, or there aren't really any elements in this game that will... that you need to understand, that you can't understand from the game itself. But there are goodies for the major fans, the fans who will recognize characters. You know, you, you come across the, the cane of, you know, the penguin. You come across the, like, goggles and such of Catwoman. You know, you meet Clayface and he tries to trick you with, with the shape-shifting. You know, all, all this stuff was really great. And, yeah, just... I think... That, oh, and I gotta say, just the, 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 the final nightmare. With, you know, it, it starts with just... Did anyone catch the game last night? <laughs> and it's just... What? WTF? What was that? You know, it's like... And, and you kind of maybe get this... Oh, this is another nightmare. And, and then it does... It does a glitchy thing. Which I love because it's not... It's not so much... Batman falls over. It's... Oh no, my game is glitching, and, and you're like, there's a half second there where you're like, was that supposed to happen? It throws you off, and then it replays the opening, and for, for a full second or two, you're like, is my, is my game bugged? What is going on? And then you see, like, the Joker driving the Batmobile. You see the sign outside of Arkham, Batman maybe an escaping malpatient, you know, it, instead of 
the hitchhikers may be escaping patients from from Arkham, you know, and and Batman's strapped down. No, help me, get me out of here. And and Harley's walking there, and the goons, Scarecrow is the doctor, of course, and the new warden is Scarface. That's perfect. And and you hear him even in once you get into the like the main nightmare bit where again we're in like Prince of Persia territory and you hear him talking about well you know it it seemed a little strange to reopen the, the asylum but okay the the you know the the patient's going for treatment with Waylon Jones and I'm told that he takes really good care of him something like that and you're like you know well he's eating them he's and yeah it's just it's it's so chilling and so beautifully delivered. It's it's got the. It's it's a good combination actually of, of Scarecrow and Joker. It's it's got these really disturbing, insane elements of that are more Joker, and it has these more straight up fear with with the huge, you know, vigilant figure of Scarecrow and the, the skeletons and the like. Although, you know, the skeletons, I get it, but I, I do feel that maybe there should have been something there that would be more like... I don't know, I guess it is something you would be afraid of in real life, but in the game it's not that effective, and it's one of the only fear things you know what? It should have been his parents. It should have been his parents and they should have yelled accusations at him, at least in the final, like, um, the final nightmare of Scarecrow's creation, you know, it should have been his parents. Why didn't you save us? You know, I, I love the presence of them in the first nightmare. And that again is where it really bridges the gaps between, actually it might say in his character bio as well, but yeah, you know, you get that that's something, that's a big part of Batman's character, of Bruce Wayne, that he was scarred emotionally by this, yeah, event in his early life. And I do believe that covers it, so yeah, amazing game. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.